Oh yeah, taming rich GML. I thought I would be stealing from the rich GML and give it to the poor. But the results will be, could be an interpretation. Okay, but I'll be telling you something about uh, Steddle, um, which is a lightweight Python framework for geospatial ETL. A little bit about myself. I'm an independent open source geospatial professional. Um, and in daily life, I'm also the secretary of the OSGO local chapter in the, in the Netherlands. Um, and a member of the Dutch Open Geo Group, a corporation of um, independent uh, uh, professionals in uh, op providing open source geospatial uh, support. And this is some of the things I like to do in my spare time, playing with mobile and uh, GPS. But um, of course, you always start any project because you want to solve a problem. In this case, I guess we have a problem. Um, and the problem is the rich GML problem. And um, we say rich GML, and it's a term I coined together with Marcus Schneider, the, the, the lead developer of Degree, because people always talked about complex GML. That sounded a bit negative, rich GML. So probably you have guessed what the rich GML is about. Rich GML, complex mesh, you could say. Um, so think of application schemas. <laughs> and uh, of course, they are designed very neatly in, in tools like uh, Enterprise Architect. And then with the push of a button, some schema is um, generated. So probably you are aware of several of the schemas. And mostly they deal, for instance, with Inspire. You probably know the NX uh, schemas. But also many of the Dutch uh, or the national data sets in several countries use um, application schemas, if you're lucky, or some other form of complex uh, XML. So in the Netherlands, we have national data sets. In, in Germany, there's uh, national data sets. And I just learned that the UK uh, OS master map is also a form of uh, XML, GML. And apparently complex, more complex than I thought. So how, how to give an impression, what I've talked about, this is Dutch addresses and this isn't even an application schema this is what i would call semi gml it's xml with some gml namespaces and well lots of overheads and what you see also is a sort of arbitrary xml like you could have uh, multiple um, elements of the same element uh, nested elements um, um, imp uh, implicit x links so and if you look at Inspire, for instance, this is part of Inspire. I won't explain every element here, but this is the street name only of an Inspire address. So the Inspire address model is one of the most more complex models. So, I mean, an address would be like a street, a number, and a, and a place. But somewhere over here is actually the street name. And the rest is all... Um, overhead I could say no nah, it's uh, it's part of the model but um, we want to do something useful with this let's say make a map make a geocoder of the ad addresses so um, we, we have to deal with complex model transformations and not only uh, are the models complex but it's uh, there are huge files like we talk about gigabytes of files uh, GML files um, so this is part of the Dutch address. When you download it, you get all these XML files. Um, that means there are millions of objects and maybe 10 millions of elements. So to, to transform this, to do you something useful, like, like um, putting it in a, in a database and making a map, we need spatial ETL. So what are the options? How can we do this? Um, one approach is, of course, to write a program for each uh, data set and then try to do that. And so in some cases, that I've seen that working. Maybe it works. Um, but of course, if we look at the open source geospatial world, we have several high-level uh, tools. And with high-level, I mean tools for the GUI, where you can sort of uh, set out the, uh, the transformation. Uh, so GeoCattle may, may, may be known to, to some of you. Um, 
talent geospatial and this week I learned also about hail. I knew the project from a couple of years ago and it was a little bit shaky but it seems to be very much improved. So um, if you're sort of on a search, also try these. I mean I've, I've, I've also tried these but I'm a sort of um, old uh, Unix command line hacker and I, I, I like to stay close to the iron and these are some of my favorite tools. Um, so, let's say, if you, if you have to transform a shape to PostGIS, I would use, let's say, OGR to OGR, maybe even shape to PTSQL. Um, but each, each of these tools, an XSLT, uh, someone not familiar with XSL? So I uh, won't have to explain what X. So that's to transform XML to another XML schema or anything else in PostGIS. But the problem is, each of these tools is very powerful, but cannot do the whole thing. If you have random XML, you cannot just use OGR to OGR. I mean, you have to do... That's why I said that you need multiple transformation steps. So, and this also came out of yeah, some years of uh, dealing with this. So, the question is how to combine these individual very powerful tools um, Actually, Frank Warmerdam will be somewhere in the next room just now talking. Uh, so, and this came out of earlier research in, in some of the uh, INSPIRE projects I did in the SDN Eurogeographics uh, context, and uh, several people are even here in the room, like Frank uh, Answer. Um, so, what we did there was this multi-step approach. Let's say we took cadastral data that was exported into a shapefile or methinfo. We used OGR to OGR to produce a simple feature GML file. And the simple feature GML file could be translated via XSL. And then we could uh, generate Inspire Annex 1 GML. And then we use uh, FS load, which is part of the degree tool set to load it into, uh, let's say, an Inspire database. But that was sort of ad hoc and a little bit of scripting. It was a bit hacky and it didn't scale up. So from that, I thought how to combine these tools. And the answer is basically um, add Python to the equation. I done a lot with shell scripting, but then I said, well, Python is ideal. And Python makes a lot of sense in the geospatial world because it integrates with all of the existing uh, libraries that are there. Are. So, this is really what, what, what Stedl is about, in, in the sense, okay, it combines uh, the basic tools, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the abbreviation is, uh, so now it's written like this, I think in the abstract it's still with capitals, but um, it's about simple streaming, spatial, and speedy ETL, that's what what it tries to stand for. So um, it's basically for, from barrels and buckets of GML, for instance, loading into PostGIS and then using QGIS to make beautiful maps because I should show a map. It's a, it's a map. It's a geospatial conference or a geocoder. But Stedl is not just about loading uh, GML into PostGIS. That's one of the scenarios. So I should show a map here. This. This guy is amazing. He's also here in the map contest. Yeah, Willem van Aals. So he, he uses some of that tooling to produce um, topographic maps of uh, cities in the Netherlands, uh, combining uh, topographic and uh, address data, building data, and with QGIS, of course. So what are the Stedl concepts? Actually, it's quite simple. If you have multiple transformation steps, you go from one source to a destination, a target. So it's set up like, um, well, you need some input and then several filters to uh, process the data. But this is still quite abstract. So for instance, an input could be a GML file and the output post TIS and then it would go through several, one or more filters and um, something to produce output. So this is one sort of trivial example. So you could have some kind of GML reader module and then it would um, send its output to an OGR to OGR um, output module and it would uh, output to PostGIS. So 
let's, let's take this Inspire model transform I showed earlier. Um, for instance, data could be also be already in a post-GIS database. So OGR to OGR is just a model which um, command line, uh, well, which is integrated, um, which takes out the data. It's, it's, it produces simple features as, as, a, as a continuous uh, XML stream. And then XSLT would be used to um, create complex features. So that would produce, for instance, GML files. So it's not just about reading stuff into post-GIS. Um, and I will get more specific. It's still a little bit abstract. So instead of, and that's the, it's a little bit like, like Lego. You could just connect anything to anything, at, as long as, of course, as the inputs and the outputs are compatible. So this writer to a GML file could then, re, for instance, be replaced by a degree writer, which is sort of specific model module which writes into, uh, in this case, a degree blob store. Or it, there's also an output writer for WFST to publish directly to degree or to GeoServer I, I just learned. Um, so how does this work? Input, filters, output. Uh, let's take an example step by step. So. We have some random XML file here. We, have, we apply an XSLT filter and we use OGR to OGR output to produce a shape file. So sometimes you get this kind of random XML. So it's not, not uh, let's say, a feature type. It's just XML and it has some names and some coordinates. And so you couldn't run OGR to OGR maybe with some very clever, clever uh, command line filling, but uh, so you need some, some way to, to convert that. So we have an XML input module in, uh, or I should say a component in Stettle, and then we produce an XSLT filter to create, to transform this to simple feature GML. So, and XSLT, yeah, I know there's some criticism on, on XSLT, but it's very, very powerful when you have to uh, transform one, um, basically, three XML schema to another schema. So this simple XSLT script will just take the, the points out of it and, and produce um, an OGR a feature collection, basically a simple feature collection. So we find the same uh, places, Amsterdam, but then it's, it's, it's true. Um, through GML, so this into this. So that basically comes out of the XSLT filter. So once we have simple featured uh, uh, GML, we can apply OGR to OGR, and then you could produce basically any of the output, and in our case, it's a shape. So how is this all glued together? Stettle is based on configuration files, so you don't have to program basically nothing. Uh, you only have to configure the, the transformation. And the transformation is, um, so this whole chain is um, specified in a configuration file. And it's a, a simple file format, the ENI file. It's an, uh, you can find it in, in, in Windows, but also in Python it's used a lot. So basically, the whole chain, there's a, a sec special section called ETL, and you can, have, you can have multiple chains, in this case one chain, it's an input XML file going through transformer XSLT, and then an output OTR shape, and these are sort of identifiers which point to sections further up in the file. So input XML file points to this section, and as you can see, the the specific component processing the unit is uh, uh, identified by a class name and then there are specific parameters for that class and the class is really a component. So do I have a block like XML input is a component and it's specified here as input XML file and you see the file path pointing to the um, specific input file. Later on, we'll see how we can parameterize that as well. And the transformer XSLT is another component here, and it's uh, 
needs a script and that script is in an XSL file. And for OTR to OTR, you can just apply your regular OTR to OTR command, which is nice because it's the syntax of this is all known. But basically you glue together these uh, different tools in this uh, simple configuration file. So although configuration files could be more uh, extensive, of course, this is a very simple example. And to run this thing, there's a command line uh, tool called Stettle. And, uh, the, and you specify the configuration with the minus C option. And then it will produce, and of course we use QGIS these days, the result as a shapefile. So, Stettle is in, in Python, so it needs, um, it's ca it can be installed via the standard Python uh, uh, space like uh, uh, Python package index, so that's sudo pip install Stettle. It's not yet for Debian or, or not yet other packages. And there's, of course, some dependencies. On Linux, it's, this is very trivial to install these dependencies. I know it's somewhat harder on Windows. Um, so I talked about uh, speed as well. What, what also is part of Stellar is this, this whole streaming thing, because you cannot, um, let's say, if you have a few hundred gig a few hundred gig, a few hundred, uh, hundred megabyte uh, XML file, you just cannot parse that in memory and then pass some, something like a document. So Stell is based on, on, on streaming without intermediate storage. And uh, also Stell calls upon all the native libraries, the C libraries, so it's libxslt, libxml2, those are standard libraries in Linux. So um, it's speed optimized, going native, um, and for each of these input filters, output components, there are several options now. And, um, but you're also able to write your own filter. So from, no, this, this is a little bit of Python, maybe I should show some code. But um, if you want to add your own component here, let's say a filter, you can specify your class name in the, in the, in the configuration file. And then there's a, here's a trivial example that just prints some standard output. And there's, of course, standard APIs. So your filter always needs to implement an invoke method, and then you get a packet, and the packet contains the data and the, and the status. So, okay, what is exchanged between these uh, components? What Stettle doesn't do is make uh, uh, a, 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 its own feature mo internal feature model. It stays very close to the feature information that comes out of these different tools. And where necessary, the one, one uh, format is um, translated to another format. So, um, for instance, an E3 doc is um, a, a Python uh, version of an XML document. But the document can uh, a stream can uh, split a very large document in an XML stream, and then you can specify uh, at which point and uh, how many features you make a document. So you can split a huge XML file into multiple smaller documents. Or you could use an E3 element array, so you get individual features. Um, so, and there's lots of several uh, components to deal with degree integration, especially to write to degree, for instance, blob store output or FS loader, that's a tool set of degree, or a very standard to just use WFST. So there's two sort of main cases where Stettle is applied. It's for um, in, uh, Inspire um, transformation, so to generate harmonized data, and the other is to, to read national GML data sets, mostly into PostGIS. Yes. Um, this is an, a more extensive example, for instance, top 10 NL, which is the national Dutch topo data set. And this is a more extensive file, and also you see multiple uh, change, for instance, for uh, initialization, setting up a database, you can also use Stettle. And all these parameters, they can be substituted on the command line with the Stettle command. So, it's not hard-coded. Hard and again, of course, we should show maps. And uh, also recently we did the BGT, maybe took a couple of hours and then 
we could uh, read the BGT into PostGIS. And this is more extensive. Um, probably I won't go into the details here, but um, this is actually has been used in PDOK, I should say this. And, but recently they tried to switch over to FME, and I say recently, that was one and a half year ago, and they're still struggling. So, uh, so the status, I mean, it's, it's not yet a full-fledged product. It's still in development, of course, and that's why I'm also presenting here to uh, show some of the results and get some, some feedback there. But you could install it already via PyPy. There's documentation, there's with read the docs. And uh, yeah, several real world transformations have been done. So, is it solved? I, I can't say the definite answer, but um, I hope to have helped a little bit solving this problem. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Questions or feedback? Stunned. It's totally stunned. <laughs> well, you said it's installable or tricky to do with the in Windows environment. How, yeah. how would you try? Um, no, the, 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 the point is not as much settled, but the supporting libraries. And uh, we always find this problem when installing something with Python on Windows. But um, there are several options there. I think in the documentation I've pointed to uh, portable GIS. I don't know. And that's actually uh, made by Joe Cook, who's around here. He's in, she's in the organization. And it's a USB stick with all the um, Windows versions of the basically OpenGeo stack. And you can run that without installing that. And that's very, very powerful. So you can copy that to a directory, for instance, and then uh, initialize that once. And so that's the first step. And then, then you already have GDAL and GDAL Python bindings and even Apache, I think even Postgres, PostGIS. And so you don't have to install it. And it's called Portable GIS. Okay. Um, I was thinking about doing something like this. And of course, there's <laughs> several options. You could use OSGO for Windows. Um, uh, there's something called USB GIS as well, but... Um, now, portable GIS, so we have some good uh, experiences. So please talk to Joe. Okay. Yeah, and we questions. Okay. Anyone spotted more than two animals? Sorry. Spotted more than two, two animals. Two animals. I saw the elephant and the python. Oh, yeah. yeah. Come on. And now Heron. I was wondering if you have any SSLT from GML to WFST. From GML to? WFST. WFST. T? Uh, XSLT, you mean? Yeah. Anyone say that? Uh, yeah. No, no, XSLT from GML. Yeah. XSLT, uh, yeah, but WFST is basically a container. Yeah, I you know. And, uh, what? That's a problem at this point. I'm trying to do it in Hale. Okay. Uh, now, the, actually, the WFST output module is uh, two or three lines of code. It's, of course, it's Python, but um, it's basically a template. And, and in the other uh, transformation steps, you produce regular GML, just like you would send to a file. But then uh, the, the last step, the WFST writer, will, uh, will take those GML uh, features and put that in a template, and that's just basically a container for the WFS, um, what is it, insert feature. One insert. Um, now, yeah, that's one of the things with Stettle. It's, uh, okay, you have a stream, uh, but you can hack the stream, or hack the stream, uh, partitionate the stream into manageable elements. So you could say, I, I do WFST for one, um, for ten features, or but you could also set up a stream to, and that's very powerful for degree, uh, of let's say a gigabyte of, of GML. Uh, so, 
there's several options here. But uh, it's another approach maybe as Hale. Um, and it's yeah, totally dedicated to, to streaming. And um, the output is basically independent of the input. How the, uh, so the WFST module is unaware how the other modules have produced the GML. It, it, it gets a document, I now remember. <coughs> but that document could be arbitrary large or small. But maybe you can talk offline if I didn't understand the entire question. I think it's best if you to go for coffee. Or not, not right now, of course. Oh, I, oh. Well, nice presentation coming up. Last question? Uh, yeah, if, if you want to incorporate some validation steps in your way, where would you suggest um, it would be best to do that? So it's, it's validating XML. Uh, usually, that's there's actually an question. Oh, sorry. The f the question is, if you would like to do validation, where where where, where would you put that step into this chain of processing? And uh, yeah, actually, there's an XML validator component, and it's usually placed after the uh, XSLT step. So that produces <laughs> um, full uh, documents in the target schema, for instance, and um, the nice thing about the validator, it initializes once to get all the XSDs out of the, from the internet and then it validates each. Uh, but uh, that's usually only done in testing because it takes some performance to, to validate each and every. But uh, yeah, and that's actually how I test it a lot to see if it all worked. Yeah. Validation is very important. Okay, thank you. Thank you, yes. Okay, thank you.